everyone, welcome back. My name's Diana. This is my channel, Bookish Die, and today we are doing a check in on my library stash. So, I recently posted my quarter two book haul, and there was a lot of books. And you would think that wouldn't be it in terms of me book hoarding, uh, but no, I am also hoarding books from my libraries, plural, uh, because I like collecting library cards. Uh, so part of the reason is I'm back in my home. I'm no longer visiting family like I was earlier this year. And so I'm now taking advantage of my local public library again. Uh, they've restarted their browsing their, yeah, their browsing services. Previously, it was just, you could sign up for curbside pickup or delivery. So I have been let loose in the library and like a dragon accumulated all of the things. So I thought this would be a good chance for me to just talk about some of the books that I have checked out, both physically and digitally, and just talk a little bit, you know, why I've checked them out, what I'm, if, what I'm looking forward to with them, because there is a decent range of materials here. Okay. So similar to my book hauls, I'm going to be doing these by categories. So first up is books for Hugo's Lodestar and Astounding Voting. So the first one I have is Finna by Nino Cipri. At this point, my vlog for the Trans Readathon will be up, so hopefully I will have read this by then. But this is nominated for the novella category. It is centered on two employees of a large of a big box furniture store that may or may not be similar to IKEA that contains portals to other dimensions and they have to go find a wayward customer. Oh, and they used to date. So this one, uh, similar to what I said in my Trans Readathon blog, I've heard great things about this book. I think it will be a very entertaining read. Next up, I have the first two books in John Scalzi's, I think it's the Collapsing Empire series. I can't remember the title of it. Anyway, I have the Collapsing Empire and the Consuming Fire. And this has been nominated for best series. And I have read a couple of Scalzi's books and I enjoyed the Android's Dream and I didn't, and I read Red Shirts, which was fine, but it wasn't like one of my favorites at all. Um, but I've heard, I have friends who really enjoy Scalzi's writing and it looks like entertaining science fiction. So I'm hoping to get to these two fairly soon. My library also has the final book in the series, but I figured I'd just check out these two for now because I didn't know when I was gonna get to them. And I just wanted to make sure I had at least the first two. Next is The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. This is nominated, Jimenez is nominated for the Astounding Award. This is a science fiction book dealing with the bond of a woman and a young boy that she finds. And I, this book has gotten really good reviews, but I don't know if I've seen people really talk about it. Like, I think I saw it in the context of these are Latinx authors that you should read instead of American Dirt when that was going on last year. So I haven't heard too much about it, but reading the flap makes it sound really interesting. And I, yeah, I think this will be really different than some of the other things that are on the ballot for the Astounding Award. So hopefully this is a good time. Next, I have A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is the first book in the Scholomance series. And so some context for this, I am most likely going to be voting this below no award because this should not be nominated for the Lodestar. I'm, I've ranted about this a couple of places, uh, but this is an adult book. It's not a YA book. And it's really frustrating for me that a book that was shortlisted for the Alex Awards is being nominated for a YA, for a YA um, award. So yeah, I do want to read it because I have enjoyed some of Novik's other work. Although I did try reading this last year and I just bounced off the opening chapter. It was very exposition heavy, but I have some friends who've liked it. So maybe it gets better. Um, so yeah, even though I do plan on voting for this below no award, I am interested to see what's here uh, in this book. Next, uh, it's not specifically on the ballot, but I do need to read it uh, to get context for something on the ballot, is the first volume of Invisible Kingdom written by G. Willow Wilson, illustrated by Christian Ward. This is a graphic novel and it is beautiful. And um, I'm not quite sure what the story is. I know Rachel Kalanati has really enjoyed the series. 
Um, but yeah, the second volume has been nominated for Best Graphic Story, so I picked up the first volume so I could then read volume two. And then the final uh, physical book that I have out for Hugo Lodestar <laughs> Astounding Award reading is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is Nom Micaiah Johnson is nominated for the Astounding Award, and this is a book about cross-dimensional travel where there are multiple dimensions, and if you, if like your equivalent has died in a parallel dimension, you can then travel there. And I, I know Mariness from My Name is Mariness really enjoyed this. I know Jen Jenny really enjoyed this. So I think this is going to be a really interesting read. And I am doing a staycation uh, in a couple of weeks, so I think this is going to go on that TBR. Uh, the next category is actually a very author-specific category, and it is Beverly Jenkins romances that I have checked out from the library. So I have yet to read any books by Ms. Bev. I attended an author event for one, her most recent release that one of my local indies uh, help sponsored and just hearing her talk was amazing and when I saw that my library had a bunch of her novels on display I just decided to grab a bunch of them uh, so I can read them and start getting acquainted with her backlist because she's written a ton. So the three books that I have are Breathless, Tempest, and Wild Rain. These are all historical novel historical romances set in the American West starring uh, African-American characters. And I'm not, I, ha I tend not to gravitate towards most historicals just because a lot of them are focused on like nobility and I have very complicated feelings about how that's portrayed in a lot of romances. But because this is the American West, I think that's gonna be avoiding a lot of my particular hangups with historicals. And I also uh, trust uh, Beverly Jenkins with rating her, like her writing so I think these um, are going to be high on my list of uh, favorite romances of the year fingers crossed next I have assorted fantasy novels that I've checked out the first one which I'm currently reading is Penrick Steeman by Lois McMaster Bujold this is the first in her Penrick and Desdemona series and I have read and really enjoyed Bujold's Verkhozigan saga which is science fiction but I haven't read any of her fantasy stuff. So I saw this at the library and thought, you know, this might be a good way to get acquainted with some of her other universes. So, so I picked it up. So far, I'm enjoying it. I'm not super far in, but I find Penrick a very interesting contrast to Miles. Like the personalities are very different and I'm very interested to see how this novella progresses and how Penrick and Desdemona's partnership uh, starts and then evolves throughout the course of the novella. Next is Descendant of Crane by Joan Ha. I had recently hauled her The Ones Were Meant to Find, which is her second book, but this is her first novel. And it is following a young woman whose father, the emperor, has been murdered. And she's trying to figure out what happened. And along the way, she uncovers uh, secrets about her empire that have the potential to change everything. I have heard very good things about this, particularly just how uh, the story is structured and the various plot twists. So I, I, I need to get to this soon because I think I'm running out of renewals for it. Um, but yeah, the cover is absolutely gorgeous. Next, I actually have two different dragon books. So the first is Fire with Fire by Destiny Soria. This is her new release. It follows two sisters who are trained as dragon hunters, but one ends up uh, bonding with a dragon. And I haven't read any of Soria's works, but I feel like I need to like keep a tracker for every time I mention Jin Jenny. But I know Jenny has really, in Jenny really enjoyed one of her previous novels. I think it was Ironcast. So this one looks really interesting. The cover's absolutely gorgeous. So this one I think will be good. And then the other one is Blaze Race Grames by Amparo Ortiz. This follows a young woman who is able to represent Port or Puerto Rico in the Blaze Wraith games and there are dragons, there's intrigue. Um, yeah, I, I know the sequel I think is coming out later this year. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one as well. And then finally, I have Son of the Storm by C.U. Davies, 
um, Okumbawa. This is the first in a new epic fantasy series centered on a young man who, uh, Donso, who comes across a warrior wielding magic that shouldn't exist. And he starts trying to uncover what's going on and things happen. And yeah, I'm, I'm like trying to find some new epic fantasy series and this one looks really, really interesting. Like the concepts just sounds really fascinating. So I, hoping there's no holds on this because I'm not quite sure when I'm gonna get to it. Next are a trio of graphic novels that I've checked out from the DC Ink line. The first is, <laughs> the first is The Oriole Code by uh, Marie Knajkamp. This follows Barbara Gordon, who is one of my absolute favorite characters uh, in her early days as Oracle. Again, one of my favorite variations of Barbara, and I'm very upset that the new 52 is kind of erased her and anyway, it's a it's a thing anyway uh this one i have been looking forward to ever since it was announced the second one is shadow of the batgirl by sarah coon this is about cassandra Kinn, who is one of my favorite batgirls and i'm very glad that she has her new imprint and the art by nicole goo is so cute oh my god look at this art yeah, so this is another one that I've been looking forward to ever since it was announced. And then finally, I have Nubia Real One by L.L. McKinney, illustrated by Robin Smith. And this follows Wonder Woman's twin sister, Nubia, uh, growing up in man's world and uh, having to navigate that as a young black woman. And Nubia has been becoming increasingly prominent in the DC comics lately. And so I'm very interested to see how that's presented in this graphic novel. I don't know if I've read any of L.L. McKinney's works before, but again, the art just looks absolutely fantastic as well. We are getting towards the end of the physical books, I promise, and I will briefly touch on some of the ebooks I have as well. So the first physical book I have is Culture Warlords, My Journey into the Dark Web of White Supremacy by Talia Levine. The, she, Talia Levine is a journalist and she, she her specialty is discussing white supremacy and I've seen her commentary on Twitter a lot. And so I saw this book on the new releases shelves and I was very interested to see what was in it because I think this is a really relevant book and I'm very intrigued by um, what she discusses in it. Next is The Making of Asian America by uh, Erica Lee. This has actually been something that I have been wanting to read for a while. It's been on my Goodreads TBR for a number of years and so I saw that my local library had it and I put a hold on it and it finally came in. Um, so I think this is gonna have to be bumped up my TBR because I think this is something that is gonna have a lot of holds on it. Um, but it's essentially discussing the history of a Asians in America, uh, which I think, which I have learned, a, I learned a bit about in school, um, but I think this is gonna be a really comprehensive history and I've heard very good things about this as well. And then finally, the last uh, physical nonfiction book I have is Kleptopia, How Dirty Money uh, is Controlling the World by, what is Buddy's name? Uh, Tim Burgess. So I love Leverage a lot. Leverage is my favorite show. And this is the type of thing that the creator of Leverage, John Rogers, talks about dirty money. And tr and he, I think at one point he's he said multiple times that uh, amateurs study robbery, robbery, pros study money laundering. And so I think uh, given my own interest in the subject, I think I was very intrigued again when I saw this on the new release shelf. Uh, and then the last two physical books I have are ones that I've already read. Um, I need to return them. Uh, the first is Puppy Love by Lucy Gilmore. I will be talking about it in my July wrap up uh, in a few, like, oh, if, I don't know what I'm filming my July wrap up. Anyway, I did enjoy this one. It's the start of a first series. It was fun. I definitely will check out the subsequent books later on. And then the second one, which I hated, um, it was one of my most disappointing books of 2020 and I need to turn it in because it's from my work library, is In the Wake of the Plague by Norman Cantor. This 
purportedly is a overview of how society changed in the wake of the Black Plague. I had actually had this checked out before our current pandemic nightmare. Um, but yeah, I had heard about this book on uh, this podcast will kill you when they're talking about the bubonic plague. I read it, I hated it. I thought that it was a very badly written overview and the author was more concerned with being glib than explaining things. So yeah, I would not recommend this book if you're trying to learn about the Black Death. So that is it for my physical library books. And then just very quickly, some of my eBooks that I have checked out because there's a lot of them. Um, the main ones that I'm excited, so some of the ones that I'm excited about, I have Beowulf, A New Translation by Maria Dobby Hidley. This is nominated for Best Related Work and I am gonna be reading it soon for the Stitch and Bitch uh, discussion about it. Uh, we've been calling it Beowulf. The then I have The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. Jen, this is the start of an epic fantasy series and Jen Lyons is nominated for the Astounding Award. Uh, I have Folklorn by Angela Mead Young Her. This is a fantasy novel um, following a young Korean woman who is trying to escape uh, her family's, cur the ghosts that have haunted her family their entire life. but. Uh, she turns out to be unable to escape it, and so she returns home uh, and starts uh, trying to find answers. And I had seen Swampna Krishna, I believe, talk about this book, and it sounded very interesting. So I've been uh, trying to get my my hold finally came in on this book, so I I'm looking forward to it. Uh, then, whoops. Then I have Chaos on Catnet by Naomi Kritzer. This is the sequel to Catfishing on Catnet, which I really enjoyed. Uh, and so this is dealing with some of the fallout from the first book. I have His Secret Illuminations by Scarlett Gale. This is a fantasy romance with a warrior woman and a young monk. And I saw Courtney Milan talk about this. She was just raving about it on Twitter. And then some people in a Discord that I'm in were talking about it. So I just borrowed it from the library. Um, Lifelines by Dr. Leanna Wen. This is a memoir of her work in public health. Um, again, it just sounds very interesting. All of these just sound really interesting. Uh, For the Wolf. Who owns Purdue Pharmacies. So I've read Keith's, one of Keith's previous books, Say Nothing, which is all about the troubles in Northern Ireland, and it was fantastic. It was so good. And so I saw that he was writing a new book about the Sackler family, and this was an instant try and get my hands on it at, at whichever library I could. And so finally, uh, LAPL, where I have a card to, got it. So I'm now hopefully going to be reading it. Um, so yeah, I think this will be very interesting. If you seen Leverage Redemption, uh, the anti the villain from the first two episodes is a Sackler with the file numbers barely scratched. It's yeah, they sign up. Please watch Leverage Redemption so we get another season because it's very very good. And I need to have um more corporate criminals getting comeuppance. So yeah. So that is my current state of library stash. It is quite a lot. Um, I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to get through absolutely everything before due dates come in, but I'm gonna do my best. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, there's probably gonna be a lot of repeat, check out, turn it, don't read, turn in, check out again. Um, so yeah, anyway. Do any of my library books sound particularly interesting? Uh, do you have any opinions on them? Are you also like me and just hoard library books like nobody's business? Please let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.